My name is John Sidorowitz. I'm VP of Inside Sales and Customer Service here at Eccentric. Been in injection molding for about the last 15 years and in, in all aspects. Let's get started. So for the agenda for today, uh, we're going to kind of get into uh, rapid manufacturing versus traditional. Um, kind of the basic or, or overview of the injection molded component process and, and how that's developed. Uh, benchmarking criteria. And then kind of go... Uh, dive into the traditional manufacturing process and the rapid manufacturing process a little bit more in detail. So kind of highlighting uh, rapid versus traditional manufacturing, you're going to have you know faster process steps. Um, there's a lot more uh, digitization, online uploading uh, files, uh, quicker responses. Uh, there's more efficiencies. Uh, it's more economical from a pricing perspective. Uh, and this can lead ultimately to new market discoveries, uh, optimized learning curves on, on parts, and then uh, untapped revenue streams for new product development. So up here we have kind of the uh, the path for developing a uh, injection mold component. So during your design phase, uh, that's where you're going to kind of come up with uh, your part geometry, establish your tolerances, uh, identify your part materials. Um, based upon the characteristics of the part, how it's going to be used, where it's going to be used, uh, et cetera, and then any surface textures, polishes, or uh, whatever's needed and how that part's going to, uh, to be used. Next, uh, the prototype phase, uh, other than 3D printing, you know, moving into a, a prototype mold, you're going to have your tool design, uh, your tool build, and, and your parts being molded and then inspected. And then once the parts ship, you're going to take your, your um, prototype parts, do your own inspections and, and testing of those parts. And then lastly, make any iterations or engineering, engineering changes uh, to that part um, or move into uh, production of that part uh, with production tooling or uh, use that prototype tool for production. So benchmarking criteria. You want to look at your supplier types. Uh, so out there, you're going to have your traditional injection molders. Uh, you're going to have marketplaces uh, and then rapid injection molders like us. Uh, the other benchmark is going to be time, you know, from design completion to order placement, and then from order placement to first shots, and then from first shots to the next design iteration or, you know, getting to that final product. And then lastly, and, and probably biggest, is cost. So next, we'll kind of dive into the traditional molding process. So with this process, you're going to have many steps uh, that you're going to go through. And, and a lot of those are to monitor and ensure the safeguards um, that are in place throughout the process to catch anything. Uh, this just extends out the, the lead time of the tool and, and getting parts in hand. Uh, there's going to be various steps for testing form fit function and discover part flaws. Uh, it's, it's more of a manual process than automated. And if modification is required um, sometime either after the process or during the process, the process kind of resets itself. And then typically your traditional molds are going to be made from steel, either be P20 or S7, um, some hard material, which takes longer to cut. Uh, material costs are higher, and they're really dedicated more for high volume part production. So here's just a little bit of a visual of the, the traditional manufacturing process. On average, you're looking six to 12 weeks from, from getting a quote to getting parts in hand. And we'll kind of go through each step here. Um, some will be faster than others. Uh, so submitting a part for quote, typically this, um, whoever the traditional manufacturer is gonna get the part uh, print, you know, review with a team of individuals, go through the part, um, and then provide a manual quote. And at the same time, kind of doing a DFM analysis, um, providing any feedback, any issues, or anything like that. So once that's all gone through and everything's in agreement with uh, the part and design, uh, that's when the manual order takes place, usually submitting a PO to that supplier, and then inputting the order, and then moving on to, to mold design. You know, at this stage, um, it can be a lengthy process because there could be a lot of back and forth. Uh, design again is reviewed for viability, um, and at this point you're subject to re-quoting, redesign, or redefining that project. So anything along those lines could cause delays. So once your mold design is approved, 
Uh, typically, it's going to go into mold manufacturing. Um, you know, at this time, you know, this, this could be a, another lengthy part of the process. Um, so once the tool is completed, your parts will be molded, and typically it will go through a cycle until it's met the, the specifications of the part print. And then through final inspection, um, and then into shipping. So again, you know, first shots, uh, visual and dimensional inspections are done here. Um, but it, like I said, it could be multiple iterations during the parts being molded. So in the event of a non-approval, the process can be modified and revised again until everything's met and achieved for print. Obviously shipping to the customer and review. Now in the digital manufacturing process, it's going to be a little bit different. So the key process components are going to be cost, quality, automation, and speed to market. So the overall process is digitized, um, you know, online, submitting data to reduce costs and increase efficiencies. Numerous iterations can be handled quickly and more efficiently with quality control. So, um, you know, if we need to move a hole or, or thicken a rib or something like that, it can be done faster than a traditional route. Um, streamlined processes accommodate, accommodate quicker turnaround times with lower cost. Uh, complex designs are accommodated, so it doesn't have to be a very simple part to, to use this process. It could be a difficult part, many hand loads, um, inserts, overmolding inserts, overmolding. Uh, so there's really no limit uh, to this process. Um, and in this process, excuse me, lead times can be weeks instead of months. Um, and can lead to new market discoveries and again optimizing the learning curves of the design and the, and the components and uh, leading to, to untapped revenue streams. In this process for rapid manufacturing, traditionally your tools are going to be made of, a, of aluminum. Here at Eccentric we use a high grade QC10 aluminum. So it's easier to cut, um, faster, uh, it's you know a, a, a cheaper alternate to, to steel. Um, it dissipates heat quickly, it's recyclable, and um, you know, works well for prototyping and bridge tooling and, and low volume production. Really the only con with it, it is it can break down over time. Um, if you're depending on what type of materials you're using, if you're using a high abrasive material like a, a glass filled nylon, uh, it will limit its tool life. But with Eccentric, we offer a lifetime mold guarantee. So if there is tool wear, we guarantee the life for the or we guarantee the tool for the life of the project, which essentially means um, no limit on parts. So if the tool does wear, we will either address it, fix it in the tool, or cut a new tool. So typically, you're going to upload your 3D model uh, via the website, um, and with Eccentric, you're going to get an interactive quote within 24 hours along with a DFM analysis, um, you know, outlining any potential issues or anything like that. And uh, one of our sales engineers will talk you through if there are any, um, anything that can help save costs or, uh, or if anything that needs to be changed. So those kind of all happened, happen at the same time within 24 hours. You can place your order right online, uh, upload your PO. Um, there's no manual process. So once the order is placed, uh, it goes into uh, design, and we have our proprietary advanced mold making system, which goes from design to CNC, and right into uh, the mold manufacturing and, and mold assembly. From there, we mold your parts uh, within a few days of the mold being done. We do any inspections that uh, are required by or requested by the customer. Uh, we have a basic level of inspection, uh, but we do offer different levels. Uh, depending on the requirements, a lot of customers want to do their own inspections on their parts. Ship the parts, and then under customer validation, that's when most of our customers do our form fit function testing on their parts advise us uh, you know, if, of any issues or anything they want to change, and that's when we um, you know, do an engineering change or a groom to that tool. So as I mentioned earlier, we have a couple different options for inspection. Um, you know, after, you know, molding parts in-house, we can, you know, do full layouts, um, some quick checks on parts, 
Uh, we just really need to know up front what, uh, what the requirements are as far as inspections go. And we also do have project management consulting where, you know, identifying, you know, if issues are identified after we can, you know, help consult and, and, and figure out how to get the part where it needs to be uh, after first shots. So kind of in summary here, uh, the traditional manufacturing process has many steps and is subject to additional validation steps, um, time to market, and cost. So it's just a, a longer process, longer to go through. So if you're needing parts in, fan, or in hand fast, it's probably not the route to go. Uh, the digital manufacturing process or rapid manufacturing process is going to be more efficient. Uh, it's going to potentially save on um, inspection time, cost, iterations, and, and time to market. 